first thing we're going to do with this old diesel, oh this old, sorry, diesel, TED petrol Kero, is this was the old tap and that was the old screen. The little petrol starting one's blocked completely and the, the other one has the screen missing as well. So a while back I did a video on restoring one of these. So let's put it in. Looks a bit too shiny for the rest of the tractor, doesn't it? So that's not looking bad. I'll tighten that up and I'll come back when it's done. Well, I've put fuel in both tanks. I've put a bit of petrol in each of them. Main reason is to see what's leaking and what's not. Is the tank any good? Um, we'll just go from there and just see. But both the tanks appear to be good even though this petrol tank looks very dirty inside I'll just do up this pipe around the back of the fuel tap here that I hadn't done and we'll see what's going on so we haven't even tried to start this tractor yet we heard it run a while ago, years ago, a few years ago and the farmer I bought her off said he could get it running for a couple of minutes, so we'll just see. Alright, we'll turn the fuel tap. I've got the bowl off here so I can see. That's the fuel tap to the large tank. Plenty of fuel there to run an engine. Not an awful lot on that one. That tank was very dirty, I'd say. I'd say with us putting the new fuel in, we've stirred up all the junk and I'll probably have to pull this out from time to time and clean it up, but that fuel sample isn't very good. I'll put the bowl back on. Just loosely. Now that sample of fuel there is very cloudy. You can see, yes I think you can see, you can't see through it at all. So we don't want that. We'll wipe out the glass bowl again. Let it run a bit. Tighten that up, clean that up so you can see what fuel sample we have. And turn it on this way. It's not looking real good, is it? Okay, so that tells us there's a the float's probably stuck on the carburetor. See, when we loosen it off and let a bit of air in, it comes good. And you'll see that sample of fuel there is far better. So for this moment, at this moment we'll run off the front tank and we'll leave that front tank open. And we'll go around to the carby and see what we've got. I've got the drain missing on the carby on the other side. I've actually undone it. So we'll go around there for a look. Well, this is a this is a later carby, the 28G. And just down here that you can't quite see, there's a fuel drain tap. And the fuel drain tap is so you can drain the rubbish out of the carby. Now, with the fuel on coming into this pipe, we should have fuel just pouring out of there. So first fix, give the needle and seat a bit of a tap. Sometimes that's enough, not in this case. So what we need to do is undo the pipe. Now where's that undoing? Now it's 
sundering out of the carby, so we need to we need to nip that up. I'll go and get another spanner so I can put two spanners on it, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Looks like the spanner has been rounded. It's not a 12. It's not a 13. It's a Undo this and deal with it outside the carby, I think. You've got to be careful with these carbies. They've got this rubbish metal in here. If you tighten this too tight, you can split it. It's a 12 by 1.5 thread, if I remember rightly. I may be wrong on that. Don't race out and buy the helicoil kit yet. <laughs> I might have the bull by the balls. So what we're looking for is that we have fuel coming out of this fitting. That should be just plenty. We'll let that run for a little. Obviously, the needle and seat's just in here. Now you don't want to tap that hard, eh? It's just a... Well, look, it's no go, so let's take the carby off. We'll go and turn the fuel off. That's fuel off. Just lift that up out of the way a little bit. You'd think I'd go and get the right tools, wouldn't you? throttle back. What have they got in there? They've got a little <laughs> little bit of wire. tight for your fingers. big homemade cork gasket in there so I'd say the carby's been off a couple of times so we've got the choke off now we need to hop in behind
In this instance, I'm just going to pop the governor rod off to come with it. So I've got a bit of wire all twitched up there in the back. I don't know how this was running. Look at the slop in this bloody thing here. Can't have been running real well. So that'll come off with the carby now. Normally if there's just a split pin at the back of the carb, you can pop in and pop him off, but this one wouldn't let us. And there you go. What a beautiful bit of gear. That's that little bit of wire. Just holding the throttle rod on. That's what happens with wire, you can't quite get it straight enough to get out sometimes. Anyway, let's take this inside to the bench and we'll have a bit of a fiddle. Okay, look, we've got the carb on the bench. I've gone and give it a bit of a clean, just a bit of a one. I didn't want to get too stuck into it, but in the Kero bath, that's as good as it come up with a bit of a blow dry with some air and that. So well, that's good enough to get us started. We'll, we'll do the job properly when we when we get there. Now, all I have at home here is a gasket set for a 28G, it's a Bearco kit, and I have, haven't had a need to go to town, so I'm not planning on it if I can help it. And this kit, when we had the big floods, it went through the floods. And the gaskets are a little bit hard, but I was too, <laughs> I too much of a tight ass to throw it out, so we'll see. It may save the day today. Um, the paperwork is all. Where are we here? See if I can get it apart. There's the exploded diagram that you get with the with the kit. So we'll we'll start. And look. First up is on these carbies, the easiest thing to do is there's one, two, three, four. Can you see that yet? One, 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 two, three, four, five, six screws here on the top of the carby. So if we undo them, yes, sometimes if these screws get hard, just put your large screwdriver, the largest one for the groove, and just give it a tap with a hammer, and sometimes that jar will be enough just to get them to free up. But they shouldn't be too tight as a rule. and keep it in frame if I can. Sometimes when you're filming you, you're trying to get a shot in and next thing you, you slide the job off to the side a little bit and you realise you've been talking to no one and no one can see what you're talking about anyway. So that's highly likely to happen. fitting on the carb there. It's only finger tight. It's got the thread tape on it and there's hardly a hex left on it. It's been off that many times. And interestingly on the two bolts that come out of the fuel bowl 
Um, one of them had no hex left on it either. So I'd say fuel has been a problem with this, but look, we'll run through this. We'll try and clean it up enough to get the tractor going. These have no spring washers under them, where others have had, so. And now up the top here, we have our choke. Now we should be able to just turn that. There's a little, there's a little cross in there and a little cross here. So if you try and just put it in, it won't go in. But if you bring it round at an angle, it'll go in. And then it can't slide out. That's how they keep it there. Okay. So look at this. Look at the floats. They look quite sticky. Now the needle. See what should have happened is when the fuel comes through the pipe into here, it should have tiddled out the needle here and no matter where this was with it empty it should have let fuel come back out through this hole here and drain but it wouldn't do that so it's really worth looking at the needle and the seat. Now this little this little shaft here there's a little shaft, a little brass shaft and you can see it comes up each side here so it's a u-shape so we'll just try and get a little o-ring pick under there and that may be easier said than done by the look of that oh well we might leave that for a moment and we'll, we'll take this top gasket off. Now the needle and seat. It's probably a 13 millimetre. no hole in there at all. Completely blocked with rubbish. That's why there was no fuel coming through. Nothing at all. Alright, I'll see if we can find a new needle and seat. Well look, I think seems we're this far, we might just pull the whole thing apart and do the proper job. Now that's a Venturi. Notice there's a long side here and a short side. The long side sits down into the housing and the short side sits down here with the main jet. And with the air coming in through the side here and going up through there, getting drawn in by the engine, the Venturi makes a low pressure area around here and that actually sucks the fuel up in um, and it, it keeps it suspended until it goes into your engine. So. so I think this is such a mess that we may just run right through it. The choke shaft is a little wear but look that's, that's not a problem for us. It has an adjustable main jet. Rubbish in there. 
Poor old thing never had a hope, did it? Looks like I'd better make a bit of room. That's the old needle and seat. That's not for there. Now with these jets, try and get the correct socket to go down. If you can. I think we would need an 8mm. Which in a long socket I'm not looking real promising to having. Alright, we'll go and have a look for the proper spatter and come back. Right, <laughs> I don't know, I should have a socket for this, but anyway, I had a little spanner that I could work up into the end here and loosen it up. That's a 5 16th, so I do have one somewhere, so there's a the job now, find that. That's the bottom of the main jet. Now depending on how far this is through to how much fuel gets let in down through the bottom there, so now choke shaft's not looking too bad. A little wear, but that's okay. There's a little stone gauze in there that we can't see anymore. I would like to get that this here out if I can. And there's a couple of really small little jets in here. Now they are tiny. So we'll clean all around them. I'll get a bit of um, carby clean and I'll, I'll give them a bit of a blow and we'll just see if I can get them out without damaging anything. The top of this one here looks to be damaged. And this one doesn't look too bad. But getting this out, I think this will be frozen in there. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I'll go and get some carby clean and we'll give it a squeeze. All right, we're back. I'll try. A little hammer. Give that a little tap, just a little gasket hammer. Same as on the other one. Different size. They're different size threads, so you can't so you can't mix them up. That's all okay in there. I'll just make sure there's no rubbish inside. You can see down through the centre here. That's the other side of this stone gauze. And the stone gauze is to let a bit of fuel out without letting dirt in if you get a bit of a gutful. But it's all blocked up down there, you can. You can see the rubbish in there, it's incredible. Right, now we have to work on this fella here. 
I'll see if I can get a right angle O-ring pick and lever. Oh, well, that's coming now. And that's you. That's your float. And this is on a 28G carby. Now what we look at with these files, we look to see if there's any dents in them. There's a dent there. So if there's dents in them, that's a sign that the carby, there's another mark there. A, a dent can be a sign that it's backfired and collapsed the float a little bit. Got something written on there, and I'm. Oh, I can't really see it. I'm thinking. See this mark? You can see that dark mark around there. That's an epoxy of some sort. Was it a stain? It looks to be down the bottom here. Looks to be quite thick. That's actually a rub mark. A dent on the on the front. But it seems to come off easy enough. So it's probably more a stain to the Anything else? But look, I think we'll shout it a new float. I think it's just a sensible thing to do. Now the choke. Seven sixteen spanner is fitting that. That choke lever has a spring washer under the nut, and the shaft is flat on both sides and that's what locates everything in the right place. <laughs> Poor old girl. Now in the choke plate here you'll see two screws down in through here. Let's see if I have a yep, I have a screwdriver that looks like it will fit. We'll give it a this one's a little sharper. Maybe the other one a tap. One screw coming. It's only just grabbing.
Oh, I thought I had a file here. There it is. See if that helps us at all. You wouldn't want to have your finger down there, I don't reckon. They're peened over a bit on the back and you have to sort of bring that out, but... There's one screw. finger in hindsight I should have left the lever on a little longer so I could hold onto it easier there's the other screw that's what it looks like now with the stopper going up Chug doesn't matter. It's the throttle that mucks up all your settings. So we might just drop those screws in there loosely. You hear the shed creaking as a we're in a big tin shed, and as the sun comes on the roof, it expands and as the cloud comes over it contracts and that's all the noise so you can feel some wear there where it's had the weight of the linkage and that on it but that's okay now we have another A little bit to attack up the end here. Now we use a bigger screwdriver for that. At this stage I can't tell you exactly what each jet does. That's just a plug. There's nothing more in that housing but it is very dirty down the bottom. Well, it's sort of dirty everywhere when you look at it, isn't it, really? Oh, well. Okay, moving on to the top half. Now, there is a bit of wear in that shaft. You can feel it. I've seen them run with worse than that, no worries, but... Let's have a look. Let's try and fix him up. We have an idle speed, actually an idle mixture screw up here. That's been bent at some stage. It's got a little bit of a wiggle to him. But the thread does look okay. Someone's been a bit heavy handed with it. Now on the main butterfly, 
There's two screws in there, which we're going to undo. They actually feel like they've been locked tightened. I wonder, I don't know if they have or they haven't. It just feels, you can feel that little bit of drag all the way. And the other screw. This one, I believe, I haven't done one of these for ages, so I am flying a little bit blind. Yep, it just pulls out. I must be remembering more than I thought. That's the butterfly shaft. That's the main one. Now, if you get too much movement here, you get a bit of hunting sometimes. As the, it sits one way and the mixture settles or runs a bit lean so it tries to correct itself and go the other way but but as far as wear goes this isn't a bad one there's a little lock nut here and that's for your idle speed So they normally don't have a nut, the other ones I've done. Well, I've mainly done the 24T, so perhaps they do. We'll take that out. I think I'll leave that shaft together at this stage. I'll probably use it again. And this fellow here will just... Feels like like it looks like some Tarzan's grip glue here. And it feels like that's got down into here. So I wonder if they had to glue it together or you can see just around here all this stuff. I think it's just where they've glued a gasket in, into the top there. But yeah, a lot of oxidisation and dirt and rubbish in here. Now the thread here is always suspect. It's got this bloody thread tape in it. Thread tape should be banned. You should just, <laughs> you should have to be able to show your plumber's ticket to buy it. Well, it's alright on shit house fittings, but um, it's not alright in carbies. Alright, there's nothing more. We can pull out of this. As I say, it's got the Zenith 28G written there. I think I'll go and clean all this up and we'll come back and see what we're going to do.